So just one word about what is the Institut Merieux, just to, to let you know um, where we are currently towards nutrition and biomarkers. So we are at a reflection stage and we don't have any things yet uh, on the market, but we are thinking at preparing things. So Institut Merieux is just a holding company made of five different companies. The, the most important one is a diagnosis company. It's called Biomerieux and it's uh, selling regions and equipment to make diagnosis and uh, they are the world, world leader in uh, microbiology but they do have also diagnosis in some other areas. So um, when now taking, I, I tried to took this presentation from, um, of course I took it from diagnosis uh, point of view, um, but we think that uh, more widely that health will face major challenges in the next decades, and uh, here are some of them. Um, obviously, we will move to personalized medicine, so why don't move to personalized nutrition? New therapies will be becoming more and more important. It's not just about pills, um, and people are trying to seek for some new methodology to treat patients. Um, healthcare is too much expensive inside huge settings as, as hospitals, so there is a push forward to leave uh, these uh, huge, very costly hospitals and centers and to go to home. And it will increase the number of um, uh, demand about point of care. Um, there is a technological revolution on the way. Um, all these omics things are now moving from research area to uh, near the patient and uh, to, there is sort of push to bring this technology in a routine basis, but there is still a lot of things to achieve to, to do that, and we will speak about that again a little bit um, after. Um, we need also, I think, to face um, what is going on in uh, thousand countries um, and keep ethical way to handle health. I mean, it's not just about developing solutions for very rich um, populations that can pay for health, but it's also thinking at bringing solutions to people and, and countries that cannot pay for that. That's one point. But another one is that part of these developing countries are now accessing to, uh, to health and are able to pay a little bit to care. And they are willing, it's, it's specific, for example, for China, they are willing to have solutions adapted to their own profile and what they are, really. So they are asking us to demonstrate that it works for Caucasian, but it can work also for some other genetic background. So more and more uh, healthcare is seen as a continuum from well-being to really treatment and it will be more and more global, multidisciplinary and integrated approach. So soon, you know, it's what will happen. It will be the hell for the pharmacist and, and I, I think for all of us. Um, so thinking about personalized nutrition, um, what can we see? as challenges and difficulties from a bio, biomarker perspective. First is, uh, there is not yet a lot of biomarkers that has been, have been demonstrated uh, as efficient in monitoring the effect of nutrition on health. So we will have to validate them from a clinical point of view. Um, there is evolution of concepts. We, we are quite sure we won't seek, I mean, one biomarker won't work for one condition. It will be certainly um, a bunch of uh, biomarkers and sometimes coming from different sources. It can be a mixture of biological uh, indicators with imaging indicator with some clinical uh, information. And it's, it will be all that that will make algorithm that will be interpreted to help someone towards its nutrition, his nutrition um, and, uh, and his health status. Um, so as I told, there is a, a rapid evolution of new technologies. They are moving now from area, research area to more routine area, 
but they are mainly discovery technologies. And this morning I heard about validating um, some genomics or, or some metabolomics things. But to validate that, it's um, uh, for research, it's very different uh, to, um, than to validate that from a real um, IVD, in vivo, in vitro diagnostic point of view. So, what, um, which type of biomarkers we can think about when speaking about nutrition? First of all, biomarkers explaining who you are, which, to which family do you belong? Um, so you, you can belong, you have biomarkers explaining that you have a very high level of lipids, but it can be, of course, and we are all of us, we are seeking for more fancy things than that. So these biomarkers will specify and stratify population in personalized way, but maybe in subgroup, it's, and certainly it will be easier to do that. Um, we, we can think about biomarkers, and we need biomarkers that are validated to be linked to specific condition, health condition or disease condition. We can uh, think about biomarkers that will witness really what is the efficacy of the nutrition diet or of the diet. Uh, of course, hopefully, we would like to have all this aim um, included in one biomarker. So it would, it would be easier, of course, if it's the same biomarker that is stratifying you, that is uh, telling in which health condition you are, and uh, the biomarkers that will be targeted by the nutrition diet you are proposing. But it may be uh, different. They can be different, all of them. Um, thinking about biomarkers of good health and well-being, we tried and we, we review literature seeking for some biological indicators of um, real health. I mean, just biomarkers that we'd be able to say, okay, you are really in good shape. So there, there are not currently, of course, such biomarkers. And um, they may be out of reach. I mean, because to establish that a biomarker is linked with a good health condition, we are up to uh, maybe 50 years of uh, observation of cohorts, and it will be too expensive to seek for that. So what it takes to develop a biomarkers? We, we can think of um, at developing biomarkers to help pharmaceutical or food industry, so developing companion biomarkers. We can think about having biomarkers that will be, uh, that will be helpful for, for individual and for public use. Okay. For the first one, it's biomarkers that will be labeled and registered towards the agency as research use only biomarkers. It's a little bit less uh, constraining or to, to demonstrate. For the second part, biomarker used routinely as uh, in vitro diagnostic biomarkers, the registration will be a little bit more difficult. So when we develop a biomarker, we need to analyze it. To, uh, and we have to first sample the fluid where you will analyze the biomarkers, and we will have to interpret it. And it's a three-step demonstration. Every time you are doing one of that uh, action, you have to demonstrate the validity of it. So to develop uh, biomarkers, you will have to demonstrate towards the agency the sample validity, the analytical validity, and of course, the clinical utility meaning it's a biomarker that is made for uh, seeking for cancer prostate, and you will have to demonstrate that indeed this biomarker is able with a high sensitivity and a high specificity to, to uh, diagnose cancer prostate. So it's, it's not relevant to think about a biomarker without thinking at how I will measure, how good I do it, and what is it for. Because if you monitor something, but it doesn't lead to any solution for the patient or the individual, I mean, it's, it's not worth it. So in, in parallel with the development of the biomarker, you have to, of course, develop the technological components that will help you to analyze, to, to prepare the samples. Um, so we will have to think having the right equipment, 
and the analytical tool, the equipment to sample and uh, preparing, and it can be different from just sampling the fluid. Um, and of course, you, you may think about integrate all of that in sort of fancy algorithm. And so what's, where is the business here? Or you develop the equipment for the analysis, or you develop for to sample and to prepare the sample, or it can be the algorithm. And we think that in the future, very high medical value test and biomarker will, um, I mean, the business link to that will be more linked to algorithm than to equipment by themselves. There is many fluids you can sample, and speaking about nutrition, person, personalized nutrition, it can come from blood, and we heard, we heard this morning a lot of about that, but it can come from, from uh, uh, feces, uh, some tissue, fats, um, for example, uh, some sampling of fats. It can be, so it can come from a lot of fluids. So Graal for us will be to be able to monitor through the skin. It's already done for glucose, for example, and we think that in the future it will be done for some other parameters. So then you have the equipment linked to the analysis, can be mass spectrometry, can be imaging, spectrometry, and so on and so forth. It will give different type of, of results, spectra, images, sequences, and you will have to process all of them. Okay, so, um, and to, to data mine and then to process, to have really an impact on, on the uh, way the individual is taking charge and, um, of himself. So it will, it will take a lot of tools, skills and capabilities and of course a lot of budget and expertise. Um, what we um, know now from the other area, not nutrition, is that on 1,000 candidates um, as biomarker, just one is really reaching the market and it takes an average of 30 years, three zero years. And uh, the example we have is PSA to monitor uh, prostate cancer. It took 10 years for the researchers to come out with a candidate called uh, PSA to monitor the prostate cancer. And then it took 10 years for the diagnostic industry to develop the correct analytical tool and to demonstrate everything. And then it took 10 years for the market to adopt it. So you can see that it's a huge investment from diagnosis company. So we spoke about point of care. If, if we, uh, we are aware of, um, um, if we are interested by nutrition and personalized nutrition, of course, we will have to develop more and more equipment linked to the point of care, but we heard a lot of, um, about that. So at that stage, we think that nutrition is, is a good strategy for all the group, uh, we are focusing on uh, trying to think about developing research use only equipment and also more in vitro diagnostic um, equipment. Uh, we would like to focus on immunity and, uh, and uh, chronic uh, diseases and metabolism uh, for the IVD. Um, so that is um, a representation of the areas of interest of food claims this last uh, five years. So Nestle is somewhere in, in, in that uh, histograms or in these circles. So, some of these uh, areas are linked to biomarker, of course. So um, we, are, we are interested by cachexia and sarcopenia. We think it's uh, an, an area where there is a real unmet medical clinical needs. It's linked to a lot of disease that uh, will be certainly the way uh, you age. Uh, so cardiovascular disease, cancer disease, and so on and so forth. Currently, it's very difficult to make the diagnosis of cachexia, and so we are looking at how we can develop biomarkers in, in this area. So um, I will end uh, here. Um, we think that uh, Nutrition, personalized nutrition is really um, something for the future and uh, it's uh, uh, strategical for our company to go there. I hope I convinced you we will need to uh, a lot of skills around us and um, I, I want to thank Mike uh, for uh, inviting us, um, exchanging with you. We are ready to play collective. 
Thank you all.